Good morning, I'm Jay Fidel here in Hawaii. Nei. This is Think Tech Hawaii. We're talking about community matters. And we're talking about the larger community, the community, not, not, not Hawaii particularly, but uh, uh, nationally and internationally with uh, Cynthia Farahat. Uh, Cynthia joins us from, I guess, Washington. Uh, she's associated with the Middle Eastern Forum, Middle East Forum, um, and she's a fellow there. And it's a really a delight to meet her. Uh, she has really been around, and I would like to, Cynthia, uh, hello, welcome to the show, Cynthia. Can you tell us a little about yourself? Thank you very much for having me, Jay. I'm very excited to be with you today. Um, well, I'm an Egyptian immigrant to the United States. I came here in 2011 uh, after uh, the so-called Arab Spring, and it almost killed me. Uh, it's been, it was a very tough experience uh, because in Egypt, I after 9-11, a uh, couple of years later, I co-founded the first classic liberal uh, political party that was advocating for equal rights for everybody and separation of mosque and state. So you can imagine I wasn't very popular. And uh, <laughs> that, of course, uh, just escalated to a lot of... Uh, very, very bad things. It's uh, under Mubarak's regime, a lot of people call it a moderate secular regime. It was not. Like people would say, um, uh, people would say that, and I'd be in awe because his regime terrorized me for a decade. I was under constant surveillance. My apartment was bugged. My house was, my phones were bugged, my computer. Um, I was living a very, very tough life. Everything I did was under scrutiny. I felt like I was a robot when I, under Mubarak's regime, all this because I advocated for secularism and not decapitating your neighbor if you don't like what he says. Mm -hmm. uh, these were controversial views under Mubarak. People would lose their jobs if they joined our party. Life was tough. And of course, when the so-called Arab Spring, which was actually a coup d'etat, took place in uh, in in in, uh, um, in February, uh, it it was uh, more um, things got so much worse very fast because I knew even before Mubarak left that the Muslim Brotherhood was going to take over the country and affiliate with the Muslim Brotherhood in the military called me and said, "This time we're coming and you are going to call it a revolution." and you're gonna like it. I told him, okay, what is the model? What is the model you're aspiring to? Guess which country they said they were after. You're not gonna believe it, Sudan. Omar al-Bashir's murderous, mass murdering regime that killed and displaced millions of people and split the Sudan, Sudan into two countries and committed genocidal atrocities, he became the first sitting president to be indicted by the International Criminal Court for crimes against humanity. He is an operative in the Muslim Brotherhood. He's a leader in the Muslim Brotherhood. And that was the model. Well, the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, as you told me, was established in uh, 1928 uh, in Egypt. And it, is, it, is, um, it had spawned a number of uh, jihad terrorist organizations that we are familiar with. As a matter of fact, I recall that uh, uh, bin, bin Laden came out of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and other, and other uh, organizations, which we generally consider terrorist organizations, came out of Egypt and uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. So, you know, there's no innocence there. As a matter of fact, it, uh, and this is why I'm, you know, interested in talking to you. As a matter of fact, they're, they're in this country um, and they have uh, specific agendas which they have been successful at in this country uh, to advance the interest of terrorist groups. And so I, I put to you a question that, that was put to you uh, in a video you made only two, two days ago uh, entitled The Muslim Brotherhood's Successful Infiltration of America uh, with Cynthia Farahad. And, uh, um, and this, uh, this was on YouTube. Anybody wants to uh, search for that, they'll, they'll find what you had to say that day. But I, I put to you this question, why has not the United States uh, designated the Muslim Brotherhood at, as a terrorist organization? Oh, that's an ex excellent 
question, but unfortunately I've been trying to know the answer to this question for years now. And I'm getting uh, very uh, uh, dissatisfying answers. They, people tell me things like, uh, uh, because we do not want to offend the Turkish government, because Erdogan is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, we do not want to uh, offend the Moroccans because they have a strong uh, Muslim Brotherhood presence in the parliament. It's all uh, very weak arguments to justify why they still have not designated this terrorist group that founded Al-Qaeda and ISIS and al jamaa Islamiyya, the Islamic group, and has been attacking America consistently since 19, at least since 1993 uh, bombings of the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. This is the group that founded all these terrorist organizations. This is the incubator of terrorism. Hassan al-Banna said, we are war. And he is right, they are war. Uh, they have uh, vowed uh, to destroy the West from within. Uh, there's something uh, very interesting. In 2004, uh, there was a police officer in Maryland who saw a woman taking pictures of the uh, infrastructure of the Bay, uh, of, of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. And he stopped her to question her. Uh, turns out she was married uh, to a man called Ismail Abrasi. And he was detained on an outstanding material witness warrant in Chicago uh, for the Holy Land Foundation trial, which was the biggest terrorism financing trial. Uh, Washington, D.C.'s FBI field office decided to investigate, and they searched his house in Annandale, Virginia, and they found an incredible amount of documents. Uh, among the most important documents that were released was called the Explanatory Memorandum. It dates to 1991, and it was written by the Muslim Brotherhood's board of directors, like Shura Council, which is the advisory council. And this document, in excruciating detail, went into their plans for the United States. And the major uh, operation is called the Amaliya Jihadiya Hadariya, which is civilization jihad operation. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's in their documents. That's what they called it, civilization jihad operation. Mm -hmm. And the way uh, they explained it is that they infiltrate all aspects of American society to destroy their miserable house from within. That's a quote destroy their miserable house from within. Are they, they, uh, they uh, anti-Israel? I guess they are, huh? Oh, yes, of course they are. Um, and, and, and are they associated with BDS? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Of course they are. Because they, um, BDS is on every college college oh, campus yeah. and very it's active them. in this country. It's them. And are they coordinating with the Muslim Brotherhood? Oh, of course. That's the Muslim Brotherhood is the is the entity that started it. Uh, uh -huh. They have a lot of front organizations in the United States because it's a clandestine group. It's a it's a it's a the the Brotherhood um, is when they were founding it. They said that they are founding the new assassins. Do you know the word assassin from Al Hashashun, from the assassin, a cult, a Shia murderous cult that existed. Uh, in the late 11th century and 12th century. And it was so brutal that the word assassin comes from this group. Yeah. That's yeah. what the Brotherhood, Ali al Ashmawi, the guy who was a co-founder of the Brotherhood, said that they studied the assassins and modeled themselves after them. We are dealing with the modern assassins. Did, I, you, I, did you have to leave Egypt? Oh, yes, of course, I had to leave Egypt in the most atrocious and painful of ways because uh, what, what happened after the so-called Arab Spring is the Muslim Brotherhood took over. Uh, they were affiliated with the Supreme Council of Armed Forces that was governing the country at the time. And uh, they were planning on murdering me. I was supposed to get killed on October 9th, 2011. 
and uh, it was supposed to happen uh, in a protest that I organized uh, with other people, of course, for um, freedom of religion in front of Egypt's uh, television, state television and radio building, because it was constantly spewing hatred and division and, and, and genocidal uh, and calls for genocide. So, so that would have been in this country. That would have that was in Egypt. Egypt when okay. I was in Egypt in October 2011, I I got sick and I didn't go to the protest. Uh, but the friend I was going with got shot execution style and killed at the protest. Oh. And after that, uh, someone called me and said, "We missed you today, but it's over. We're getting you." So oh. <laughs> two weeks later, I got on a plane. Came to America, not even where I was going. To, I didn't even know where I was going to spend the night. I literally fled for my life with a suitcase and just showed up in America. And I've never visited even. So it was it was quite daunting to to just have to leave that way. Because you learned English uh, in, uh, in school in Egypt, I suppose you, you were in law school in Egypt. Uh, although your real talent is in art, I always appreciate artists, and not everybody has the talent in art. Um, but you went to law school in Egypt, uh, and I, I, guess I went. I studied. I ended up studying journalism, but I still studied Islamic jurisprudence on my uh -huh. own time uh -huh. uh, because I studied. I decided to study everything the worst terrorist that I've ever seen studied to get in their heads. So I studied everything the blind Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman studied, everything, and it took twelve years, uh, and I completed it. To be able to predict the behavior. So, what? What you've dedicated your life to dealing with this issue? I mean, indeed, I mean, if you say that the Muslim Brotherhood is uh, is here in the United States, and you're here in the United States, and you're a fellow with uh, the Middle East Forum, um, you're you're you you carry a certain amount of risk in making public state. Well, in beyond making public statements and being here, uh, why do you why do you do this, Cynthia? Uh, because I'd, li I'd uh, la rather uh, live free or die. I lost, uh, Egypt used to be a beautiful country. It was among the freest and most civilized countries on earth. And it was destroyed in the most vile way uh, because the Muslim Brotherhood took control of the culture and society. And then when 9-11 happened and I saw the, bil the, the ideas that destroyed my country flying into your buildings, I made the decision right there that, I had no role in destroying my own country, but I wasn't going to allow it to happen to America because it's all we have. If we lose America, where are we going to go? We, we don't have anywhere else to go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's the last stop. So <laughs> well, let's talk about two, two principal issues I would like to cover with you. Uh, one is, um, you know, exactly what is the, mother, mother, uh, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood doing uh, here in Hawaii, uh, to the extent we know, to the extent you know. Um, and the second question, which I'll ask you later, is what can we do about it? Uh, but, so let's go to the first question first. What are they doing? Let's drill down on their activities here. Uh, we, we pretty much know their motivations, but their methodology is what I'd like to know about. Uh, that's a fantastic question. So uh, their main, uh, what they discuss in the explanatory memorandum is infiltrating every aspect of American life. So you're talking about media, you're talking about uh, political lobbying, you're talking about law enforcement, um, Hollywood, academia. They're in all that. They have agents in all these areas. Um, and unfortunately, they've had a lot of successes on every single front. If we take, for example, uh, academia, uh, there is uh, a program in Georgetown University uh, established by a professor there called John Esposito, and he is the embodiment of uh, the subversion of American minds on behalf of uh, Islamism. He's an Islamist apologist. I don't know if he's a card-carrying member in the Muslim Brotherhood or not, but he certainly uh, never uh, wastes a chance to defend them. In 2013, for example, uh, Esposito went to Qatar to help found 
a Muslim Brotherhood think tank uh, called the think tank Research Center for Islamic Legislation and Ethics, C-I-L-E. And he was involved there. Guess who was with him in this founding event? The friend of, Hassa, of, of Osama bin Laden, Hassan al-Turabi, was there. Al-Qaradawi, the Muslim Brotherhood theologian and a convicted terrorist. Another convicted ter designated terrorist, Al-Raisuni. Uh, al he was uh, Hassan al-Banna, the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood's grandson. Tariq Ramadan was there. It was a, it was a hub for terrorists and, and very bad people. And he was there. And that's the guy who teaches your children political philosophy and Middle East studies at Georgetown University. That's you one say, example. When you say infiltration through the media, through college campuses, through courses like that and seminars, programs, what have you, uh, it sounds to me like what, <clears throat> what the Muslim Brotherhood is trying to do in the United States is to make people what? To make people think that it, it is an all right organization, that it is doing the right thing, um, but, you know, beyond that, is the Muslim Brotherhood also fomenting um, violence? Is it fomenting jihad? Is it fomenting, you know, uh, activism in the sense of uh, trying to um, uh, get people to do destructive acts in the United States? Yes, of course. Absolutely, they are. Uh, there is... Uh and I'll give you another example that's very, very, so it's, it's one of the most disturbing uh, things that I've ever uncovered. Ever, since 2015, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, Front Organization, um, the Council on Islamic Relations, CARE, uh, and the U.S. Uh, Council for Muslim Organizations, USCMO, organize an event which they call Muslim Advocacy Day on the Hill. Uh, and they have hundreds of participants that go and push for Islamist um, causes. And one of the, the, the number two guy in USCMO used to be Osama bin Laden's webmaster. Oh, really? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yep. And he, and, he takes, and he takes selfies with senators and politicians. What kind of message is this sending to the world? To Muslim Americans. He's making it's, friends. <laughs> so can you believe that? That Osama bin Laden's webmaster. Don't is, they know? Don't they know? Yes, that, I got this information from, from the U.S. government, by the way. They are the ones who said that Mazen Mukhtar, the number was operating a mirror site for Azam.com, which was the official Al-Qaeda website, in the United States. He was affiliated his website with the terrorist who killed who who, who perpetrated the Bislan massacre where 400 children were killed do you remember the Bislan massacre school in russia 400 children were slaughtered he was affiliated with this animal and this guy is lobbying your your officials but does it stop there of course not it just gets worse if you can believe it <sighs> Among the delegates that roam the halls of the people's house, that roam the halls of the uh, the hallways of the people's house, is another guy who is for years in communication with a key terrorist, a key ISIS terrorist in Egypt, who tried to blow up the police academy in Cairo. And this guy who was lobbying on the hill. Uh, the the terrorists used to call him my mentor, my teacher. So the teacher of the ISIS terrorists is lobbying Congress. He's called uh, Al uh, Yahya Al Muntasir, and you could read this with screenshots, with pictures, evidence with pictures. It's not a conspiracy theory if they're saying it themselves. You could read it on the website of the Middle East uh, Forum. Uh -huh. If you type Cynthia for a hot, you will uh, what, see what is the forum. website of the Middle East Forum? Uh, was it uh, meforum.org, uh, -E something like that? Yes, dot yes, meforum.org. Okay. Or you can also see it on cynthiafarahad.com, my mm -hmm. website, just my name.com. Mm -hmm. And you could read the full report. There's terrifying stuff in there. And these are the people that are roaming Congress. Muslim contact me and say, we are scared to death from these guys. We can't speak out 
they beat them up in mosques if they speak out against these guys. So now they're terrorizing Muslim Americans. They're hijacking representation of Muslim Americans. Uh, they are pushing for destruction and war across the world. The death of people like me, that's what they're pushing for policies that would 100% result you, you, in. You the mentioned death of that they're like terrorizing me. the Muslim community in, uh, yes. in the United States. Well, we know it's a pretty big community, and not every Muslim is a terrorist, obviously. Um, but we do have two, uh, and on this lobbying issue, we do have at least two, maybe more. Uh, Muslim uh, members of Congress right now, as of the uh, what the 2018 election, and I wonder if there's any connection there. Uh, is the, the effort of the Muslim Brotherhood directed at them? Uh, are they uh, uh, sympathetic with the Muslim Brotherhood? What do you know about that? Yes, uh, I know that Elan Omar is uh, received funding from Muslim Brotherhood front organizations, and she's constantly in contact with them. She's even doing webinars with them right now with the corona thing going on she's constantly doing webinars with the organization with the uh, osama bin laden's webmaster so yes of course they're supported by the brotherhood because the muslim brotherhood by the way are incredibly selective and cautious about who they choose to back up they do not randomly back up politicians they do much better research than their opponents so when and the people, the people who they deal with, the people who they select, um, can we say that those people know the story, the story you've been telling about uh, what the Muslim Brotherhood really stands for, what it really does? Do they know? Do these Congress, Congress women uh, in, the, in the Congress, do they know, do you think? 100% they know, because this is how this works. First of all, these women, they understand Arabic. And anyone who speaks Arabic, that's not a secret anymore. Mm. It's 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 done. It's like it, it's it's over. This is not every. If you ask a ten year old in Egypt, what is the Muslim Brotherhood? They will tell you. Everybody knows what they are. So okay, so it infiltrated the schools, infiltrated yes. the Congress. Um, yes. Where did where does it all go? I mean, if if the United States does not designate them as a, an organization of concern, a terrorist organization, and they continue, um, you know, the efforts described in those documents uh, you know, that, that were found uh, in the Chesapeake Bay case, um, you know, wh where does it take us? Where does it take them in this country? If you just unfold that without, without any constraint, uh, what effect does it have on our democracy? So uh, 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 absolute destruction, that's what they're after. Uh, I know I, I've interviewed uh, the most important defector who ever defected from the Muslim Brotherhood. He's called Tarwat al-Khirbawi. He's uh, uh, an astonishing character. And this man told me, I told him, what is the end game? He was their attorney, by the way, for like 20 years. So he knows where the bodies are buried, he knows all the secrets. And I told him, what is the end game? He said, the United Islamic States of America, that's the end game. That's what we call it among ourselves. That's what we called it for the past 60 years. And what does that look like? What is the United... Uh, it, looks, it, it looks like uh, the other oppressive uh, uh, regimes around the world. That's the end game. Mm. And it happens stealthily. And, and there are several types of ways. They don't only do it uh, through infiltration and convincing people. There's a lot of money involved. I was offered millions of dollars to tweak what I'm saying. Tweak it. Like, uh, interesting. Yes, millions of dollars. And I have proof. I have proof of that I was offered this amount of money, an obscene amount of money every year. Um, and but you, but you did not take that, you did not no. tweak it. What was the ramification of that, that you rejected those proposals? What what, what happened? They're just uh, Nothing happened. I, I, I just told them in a very inappropriate language what they can do with this money. And I just left it to that. And now they, and it happened several times. So when mm. you hear someone saying that the Muslim Brotherhood is not a terrorist organization, they've either received money or they're super ignorant about the topic, but there isn't anywhere, there's nothing else in between. They're yeah. either very and, and ignorant. They, uh, yeah, I think you mentioned at some point, maybe before the show, 
that uh, they are responsible, or rather they are mm, parent organization to, or related to uh, Hamas and Hezbollah, am I right? Hamas, yes. They, Hamas is actually the Palestinian wing of the Muslim Brotherhood. Mm, okay. It's their chapter. Not Hezbollah. Uh, no, Hezbollah is Shiite. So it's a different sect. But they oh, this is Sunni. Sunni. That's right. Yes. So but what we have here in the them. Muslim Brotherhood is a Sunni organization. Yeah. Yes. But they also work with uh, with Iran. They also yes. work with the mullahs there uh -huh. because uh, they, they have a very uh, interesting relationship. Very, very interesting relationship. I'm, I'm writing about this extensively in my book. It's going to come out sometime, uh, hopefully this year. How can, we, how can we follow you, Cynthia? I mean, how can we follow your books, your writings? I mean, Middle East Forum is one place. Any other places we can look at? Yes, you, you could uh, find my work on my website, uh, CynthiaFarahad.com. Okay. And uh, you could follow me on my page on Facebook also. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. you're, right. you're easy to find, actually. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I Googled you and I got a whole bunch of stuff, um, all consistent with this discussion. So let me ask you one last question. We only have a minute left, and I really want to ask this one. So right now, you know, we have um, a of degradation uh, in the relationship between this administration, uh, the, the uh, Trump administration, and the intelligence community in this country. It, it seems very dicey, increasingly so, uh, as we go forward. And uh, I, I would assume the intelligence uh, community in this, uh, in this country knows what's going on, whether the country has in fact designated the Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization uh, uh, or not. They know, they must know. So the <clears throat> question is, um, what are they doing? What can they do? And, and if all things be right, what can the country do? What can we do um, you know, in order to in order to deal with the threat that you describe uh, from the quote infiltration of the Muslim Brotherhood into our into our media and our institutions, uh, there, there are uh, fantastic and mostly patriotic people working in intelligence communities. Uh, that's been my experience. Unfortunately, that's a political decision designating the Brotherhood as a terrorist group, that's a political decision. Uh, the Pentagon has a say in that as well, unfortunately, and they're not on board. So it, that's why I decided to take my fight in a book to the American people, because you are guys, you're the ones who can change things, not, not, not the intelligence community. They're gonna be, <laughs> they're gonna be pressured to do it. Uh, but the way to do it is talk to your congressional offices. Tell them there's a bill uh, there's a support it, to designate the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist group. Support that. You you owe it to us as taxpayers and to vote as as voters to do something. And that bill like is that. sitting in Congress right now. It is. Has that been is, is that been sitting there for a while or is it a recent? Oh yeah, bill? it's been sitting there for quite some so what's, time. Uh, so what political forces are holding it up? Um, it just. People are busy with other things. They're not interested. They think that we are, this is something else that people need to know. They think that we are uh, beyond the 9-11 world and we are beyond Islamic terrorism. No, we are in the pre-9-11 era, not the post-9-11 era. And that's what people need to understand. Okay. One Be more vigilant. thing comes to mind, Cynthia, and that is we, we're in the middle of a crisis right now over coronavirus, you know, and it affects everything, everything in our world. Uh, certainly it affects the government. They're, um, they're involved up to their eyeballs and it affects um, all my community, it certainly affects the media, it affects every country, 180 some odd countries are dealing with it right now. I'm sure you're dealing with it personally and the people in Middle East Forum are dealing with it. But the question is, does the coronavirus affect the activities of the Muslim Brotherhood? Uh, ha has it slowed <laughs> yes. them down? Has it accelerated them? Do they see this as an opportunity? Yes, uh, <laughs> that's a great question because there's something called now Corona Jihad, okay? And, and Corona and, and, Jihad? Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's a terrorist in New York uh, uh, called Bahgat Sabir. Um, he is not in prison, but hopefully soon he will be. He is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, and they said that the Brotherhood issued a fatwa that if anyone has the sniffles, they should go and hug uh, the infidels, especially the infidels no. working 
really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because in case you have coronavirus, you can just. That's why it's called Corona Jihad. <laughs> and, and and they said specifically for Egyptian government officials and policemen and and uh, military uh, personnel, just hug them if so. <laughs> that's what i call opportunism <laughs> well thank you thank you cynthia it's been wonderful to talk to you thank you thank cynthia you so much, Farahad, uh, uh, a, with the middle east forum uh, and a um, the fellow there and uh, i hope we can uh, circle back and talk with you again as all of these things unfold thank you so absolutely. much absolutely thank you for having me Aloha.